Hello, good morning or good afternoon. So your initial challenge for today is why do you think that some species have gone extinct? Because that's pretty obvious, right? We can find fossils and we can prove that there are species that um, used to exist and they don't exist anymore. Um, so basically you're gonna write down something for that. And um, we're gonna wait, just, just write down what you think. Can't be wrong unless you write down potato pickle or something, uh, make, try to make logical sense. And then I actually want to discuss this when I come back tomorrow, which is Wednesday for you. All right. Um, so I need to pause the video so they have time to do that. Please. All right. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start going through notes. Now, I know that um, it's not really easy to read on this screen. I've already checked it out. But um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my copy of notes, and I'm just going to tell you as we go, in case you can't see it up here, exactly what you need to have. Okay? So this is the beginning of Unit, unit 8 evolution. And what we are going to do is we are going to do, like, part of the notes today and then an activity, and then part of the notes tomorrow, Wednesday, in an activity, and then do your quiz on Thursday. You're still going to have the quiz on Thursday, but I think I'm just going to probably get through all of the notes today, okay? Um, so you guys will just, you'll just, you'll finish the notes today, and then we'll do our activities tomorrow, and we'll still have the quiz on Thursday, okay? And you'll have your homework tomorrow. We'll give that to you tomorrow. All right, um, so unit eight evolution. It's the second to last unit. If you look over there, am I still pointing in that direction when it's up there? I should be. Um, if you look over there, we crossed off every single unit but evolution So in, in ecology. So in, remember, ecology is the biggest one in the regions. Evolution is pretty big too, specific parts of it. All right, so. Um, when we learn about evolution, we're going to be learning about the first section, which is pretty small. Hopefully we'll get through all those notes today. It's origins of life. And then the second section is called theories of evolution. So basically, um, what different people have thought up different ideas that tie into evolution. Um, Darwin, talk about Darwin then. That's section two. And then section three is supporting observations and evidence for evolution. So the reason why, even though it's just a theory, it is just a theory, no one can prove it. Um, but the reason why this theory um, is so important to modern day science and how we, how we teach it and everything. Okay. So origins of life. We're on page one, the PCAC notes. All right, Earth and the solar system are estimated to have formed 4.6 billion years ago. Um, that's that many years, by the way, a lot of zeros. You can see all those zeros. It wasn't until about a billion years, years later that life was able to take hold. So it wasn't just that, that Earth formed and then, bam, life, life appeared. It took a long, long time. All right. Um, so now substitute is going to pause the video and open this video in another tab. So you guys can watch that. It's a cool, um, reenactment of the formation of the earth and the moon. It kind of shows, uh, what happened there. And we'll discuss that video tomorrow because I think it's pretty cool. Some people don't like the music, but anyway, pause. Okay. Um, so before we move on from this slide, number one, Earth and the solar system are estimated to have formed 4.6 billion years ago. Um, two, how long did it take for life to take hold? That's about a billion years. Okay. Primordial soup. So around 4.2 billion years ago, that's what BYA stands for. Earth cooled down enough for all of the water vapor and the air to condense. So basically, when air gets gets hot, 
when it heats up, the molecules push farther apart from each other because they have more energy to do that. And because they're doing that, more water vapor can fit up there. Um, but when things start to cool down, those air molecules, the different gases in the air start to come closer together and the water vapor that's there um, has to condense. So it has to go from gas to liquid, which is why it spent so long raining because it had a lot of, uh, it had to come down by a lot of degrees. The temperature had to decrease a lot um, before it stabilized. All right, so it, remained, it rained for millions of years, forming a giant sea. This giant hot sea held the ingredients for life and was called primordial soup. Pre, before, primordial, life. Okay, so three, what was primordial soup? It's the giant hot sea that held the ingredients for life. Um, so basically, the ocean was at a really, really high temperature back then because the earth was at a really, really high temperature back then. Um, and when I say ingredients for life, I want to remind you of something. The periodic table of elements. Okay. Whew. This is tricky. Nope. Nope. There we go. Periodic table of elements. So remember, those are all of the elements that exist on Earth. And when I say elements that exist on Earth, I mean the types of atoms that exist on Earth, okay? And when those combine in different ways, they can form molecules. Um, and then molecules can form living beings, like a protein molecule. It's just different types of atoms bonded together in different ways. That's all, all right? So this giant heat hot sea had the ingredients for life. So basically it had a bunch of atoms floating around in the water. Okay. All right. The first organic molecules. So in order for these ingredients or inorganic molecules or different types of atoms to come together, <clears throat> energy was needed. Because in order to make anything uh, organized, you need energy. This energy was provided by lightning. That's the theory, is that lightning provided the energy to take these, these atoms and these molecules that had come together that were inorganic, non-living, and suddenly synthesize them into something that would be considered alive. Okay? All right. Uh, oh, and your number four, what likely provided the energy to synthesize inorganic molecules into organic molecules? Lightning. Okay, so we are down to number four and moving on to the heterotroph hypothesis. And really simply, I'm not going to get into all of the really technical things about it, but the heterotroph hypothesis just states that the first organisms were probably heterotrophs. And weirdly, they were actually, according to this hypothesis, they were heterotrophs that did not use oxygen. And the reason why we think that is because there wasn't oxygen back then. Um, there also wasn't carbon dioxide. So these heterotrophs completed respiration and it's called anaerobic respiration because it does not use oxygen, but it still produces CO2, which allowed for plants to evolve because remember plants need CO2 and, um, Plants are autotrophs and heterotrophs like us, we have to eat our food. So we're called a heterotroph. Um, we, uh, we need oxygen. Um, so the earlier heterotrophs did not use oxygen. They used um, different chemicals, anaerobic respiration. All right, uh, recall a heterotroph gets its energy from feeding on others while an autotroph makes its energy using the sun. So that's your five and six. The heterotroph hypothesis states that the first organisms were probably heterotrophs. And then recall a heterotroph gets its energy from feeding on others, while an autotroph makes its energy usually using the sun. Through which process starts with a pH? Photo 
Synthesis, right. That's the process by which autotrophs make their own energy using the sun. By the way, if they use chemicals instead of the sun, it's called chemosynthesis. All right, page uh, two. Spontaneous generation is the generation of living organisms from non-living material. Um, so some scientists believe that things happened more spontaneously, more than gradual. Okay. Um, so spontaneous generation is the generation of living organisms from non-living material. We talked about this before. Um, people used to think that flies came from rotting meat, right? Right here. Because if you left the rotting meat out, flies would appear. And then later on, people got a little smarter and they realized that if you cover the jar, that no flies appear. And if you cover it with mesh, you, you can even see the flies be, you know, attracted to the smell and lay their eggs on top of the mesh, thinking that they'll go down to the rotting meat. Okay. So why is spontaneous generation not really supported anymore? Why is the idea that flies came from rotting meat not really supported anymore? I'll let you write down your own answer. We can talk about it tomorrow. All right. From single cells to multicellular organisms. So the first cells were prokaryotic, having no membrane-bound organelles. Uh, reminder, there are two types of cells, right? The prokaryotic and the eukaryotic. The prokaryotic is really old, no membrane-bound organelles, especially the nucleus. I like to talk about how the prokaryotic cells don't have a membrane-bound nucleus, and the euk eukaryotic cells do have a membrane-bound nucleus, but it's actually a lot more than that. Eukaryotic cells are much, much more complex. All right. So eukaryotic cells evolved next after prokaryotic. Many millions of years later, we found evidence of the first multicellular organisms. What was this evidence called? What's it called if we have evidence that something, um, that, that something used to be alive? A fossil, right? So fossils are the remains of other organisms. Fossils prove that the many, that many of the organisms that populated Earth have now become extinct. Scientists have different theories as to how this came about. Um, so that's your 11 and 12 right there. Okay. So basically a lot, many, many more organisms um, than that exists now have existed. Okay, so if you look at the fossil record, it's much more diverse than what we have right now. We think we have a lot of species on the earth right now. Um, actually, this only represents a small portion of what has ever lived on earth, um, according to fossils. All right, and there's an extinction theory video. And uh, why don't you pause it here and show the kids the extinction video. Okay, they're back. All right, tying into evolution. So how does all this tie into evolution? <clears throat> oh, how does all this tie into evolution? Evolution is a well-supported theory that states that organisms have evolved over time. Um, so basically things started out simple, less complex, and then they ended up getting more complex. This is the theory of evolution. Time frame for evolution. So we have two different uh, time frames that have been proposed by scientists. The first is punctuated equilibrium. So this is a theory that states that evolution occurred in quick bursts, followed by long periods of stability. So basically, everything's the same, everything's the same, everything's the same, and then big change. All right. Um, it is in contrast to the other theory, which is gradualism, which is a theory that states that evolution occurred over millions of years and is continuing to happen now. So gradualism is slowly punctuated equilibrium is fast. Okay, so you should have your 14 
Punctuated equilibrium is a theory that states that evolution occurred in quick bursts. That's your 14. And then 15. Gradualism is a theory that states that evolution occurred over millions of years and is continuing to happen now. All right. Um, this is kind of, this is a way that you can kind of visualize those two different, I don't know if you can see that. Hold on. It kind of helps you visualize those two theories. So, oh man, this is hard to control. All right. So, and it's because it's backwards, by the way. I'm not stupid. It's just, anyway. All right. Um, so this is, this one kind of shows gradualism. So things change slowly. And then this one shows punctuated equilibrium. The same for a long time, big change. Same for a long time, big change. All right. Um, think of them as kind of representing family trees. And we'll talk more about those uh, later on in the week. I think that's it for notes. Oh, it's not it for notes. So um, here we have a tree. So these kind of trees are cool because they show uh, different relationships between organisms. So if you look at it, let me set you down and you can see it. Can you see it? Kind of. Not when my head's in the way. All right. Um, so basically, this is how you read these. Um, the closer they branch off from each other, the more related they are. Okay? So... If you, you can't really see that. I'm sorry about this. So if you look, these guys are pretty closely related because they branch off here, okay? You can also put characteristics um, in the tree based on, you know, when, when they evolve, okay? So let me give you an example. If you follow, let's see this one right here. It says limbs. So that means everything before this dash that says limbs does not have limbs. So we follow it up. Yep, you find a snake. No limbs. Okay. And then if you go up, if you go over here, um, bald head. This one has a bald head and this one does not. Okay. Um, this one, wait, this doesn't have horns. What's going on? I don't know. That must be a mistake in the visual there. All right. Hooves. So everything after this line has hooves. These guys have hooves. And the very end, they do not, which is why hooves is over here and not here. Okay. That's weird. Horns is in the wrong spot. Should be over here because he has horns. He doesn't have horns. All right. That's it. So um, I'm going to end this video. Hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow. Make sure you are good. Bye.